Thank okay. you. Ready? Okay. Good evening. I'd like to open uh, tonight's East Hempfield Township Traffic Commission meeting. Uh, if you would join me and rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item up uh, for business is the minutes from July 19th, 2023. Are there any changes or corrections? Not for me. Okay. So okay. hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes from July 19th, 2023? So moved. And I'll second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries two to zero. Thank you. Up next, we have the traffic report. Uh, is there anything that we want to highlight from the traffic report, Mr. Weaver. No, I did look over it and uh, looks like, you know, things that we're aware of that people are driving too fast, pretty much. But okay. it's good to have the information gathered. I did not have any uh, additions or corrections. Okay. I have nothing. Did staff want to add anything in reference to the traffic reports? Okay. Uh, we have traffic studies. Um, as as we can see in our packet, it looks like Nisley Road. We have an issue that. Yes. Um, obviously, Nisley is a road that is frequently on our radar uh, that we get complaints about and frequently monitor. Um, the 25 zone with some of the hills. Uh, we do definitely get some local, primarily local residents using a road they're familiar with a little in excess of the speed limit. Um, what I will say is that uh, you have four traffic studies that were submitted to you. Um, we've been problem shooting the equipment that we gather this information with uh, for the past month or so. Um, Phil, the studies submitted are, are pretty accurate, but we, we did a couple other studies within the past month and those studies were not submitted to the traffic commission for review based on uh, some concerns with the data. So we were navigating whether or not it was a setup issue with public works or whether or not there's a equipment malfunction. And at this point, we think there's a little bit of both. We've diagnosed a, uh, equipment malfunction, which we are reaching out to the company to try and rectify and get their uh, advice on what to do with it. So there were some other studies done, but unfortunately I'm not comfortable submitting them uh, to you guys for this evening. Okay. And just so the public knows, um, the, the ones that we received were for Nisley Road, Snapper Dam, and Blacksmith Way. And I think that what we found, if I can just summarize it, is that we have an issue on Nisley Road with speeding, which we're going to... We continue to, to keep on our radar, for sure. Um, use enforcement and education. Yes, sir. On, the, on that particular road. On Snapper Dam and Blacksmith Way, um, it found that if, if I'm reading this correctly, um, that there were very little uh, to do in the way of enforcement, very few enforcement violations at all. Correct. Um, Snapper Dam specifically, we uh, had a, a complaint in regards to the Church Street detour. Uh, obviously, there was a significant increase in traffic volume over the past two to three months with the detour. Um, we will do another study on Snapper Dam post uh, Church Street, just so that we can analyze the two. Uh, but the the volume as well as the speed on Snapper Dam, with the volume comes a little bit of an increase in speed, but hopefully that'll settle back into normalcy here in the next couple of weeks when people realize that Church Street opened as of this afternoon. So. Yeah. There was a little bit of good news there, at least. <laughs> so, and what's, um, is there a diff on, 
I guess the Snapper Dam and Blacksmith Less Travel. Well, what's the sure? Uh, Blacksmith is a fine, but was requested by a resident in that area with the uh, new new traditions of America. They've had an increase in traffic volume and felt as though speed with the increase of volume could be a problem. Uh, I had gotten back to him. He was appreciative of the of the information, and obviously we're we're navigating perception of the speed versus the reality and the enforcement uh, and legal uh, ties that we have to to some of the speeds. So. Are they more collect uh, local roads and this leaves a collector or? Yes. Okay, that's probably the difference then. Yep. Okay. So on the traffic studies that we discussed and they they concern Nisley Road, Snapper Dam, and Blacksmith Way. Is there anyone in the audience that wanted to comment in reference to those traffic studies? Okay, anyone on Zoom? Okay. Old business, the truck route study, the draft is uh, under review uh, with an anticipated presentation at our September meeting. Is there any more to add to that? No. Okay. Uh, Marietta Avenue uh, concerns the 2200 block. My understanding, based on our last conversation, we have a speed study um, that we're going to be doing there, and we have a, a PennDOT meeting that is scheduled in the works. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that there's a large amount of people, or the vast majority of the people here tonight are for, for this issue. So um, we're going to or Mr. Weaver, before I open it up to the public, did you have any comments or? I did not. Okay, Chief. Thank you. I, I do have a couple comments okay. real quick. After the concern was brought up uh, last last month, um, Police Department did run two speed details, um, as well as uh, this is actually one of the locations that we flagged an error with our equipment. So this is on a priority list for when the equipment is back up and running. Um, it, it was done in the past month, but I'm not comfortable with the data and it's it's definitely flawed. So okay. um, the, the concerns were heard and we were making some efforts within the past month, which as well as a meeting has been set up with PennDOT. I don't want to speak on Mrs. Schweitzer's behalf there, but there are some, no, the there's been, been some headway. I okay. had a conversation with our traffic engineer. Okay. So we'll be prepared for the meeting. No, this is a different topic. So um, so the Nisley, so let's back up. We were talking about for earlier, we've moved on from Nisley Road, but we were talking about Nisley Road um, in the area of, well, I'm thinking, is it the, yeah, it would be in that area, right? Centerville Road and Nisley Road. The speed study was done on the 900 block, which is in the area of the, the Turkey Hill. Right. Um, and then the other speed study was done the 1100 block, which would be between Knowlton and Bowman. Right. And the results of that study found that there was a problem. So we're aware of it. There's a problem. There's going to be continued enforcement in that area to answer your question. But from now on, anybody that's going to speak just, and I'm not, trying to be harsh here, but we need you to come to the microphone, state your name, give your address. We have meeting minutes that get, that's okay, that uh, get taken from this meeting. So, um, but just to clarify, that's what the Nisley Road issue is. We do have a speeding issue. We had a resident that had come in at the last meeting, last couple meetings, um, you know, bringing to our attention that there was a speeding issue and we believe that that is correct. Um, and again, we're gonna take, you know, various um, steps forward and we're starting with enforcement and education uh, to resolve that. So right now we're on to the Marietta Avenue, which is the Roarstown area. That's what we're about to discuss. And as we, we just stated, um, this was brought up at our last, last traffic commission meeting. Uh, we do have a PennDOT meeting scheduled. This is a state road. Um, so we need to include PennDOT and the things will, um, we need to go through the state before any changes can be made and we are in the works with, uh, with doing that. So we are aware that there's an issue there. I'm gonna turn it over to public comment and I would just ask that we don't repeat the same comments over and over again. I feel like we've got good information that we have an issue there. Um, 
but, and those of you that have come out, you know, if there's something new, we'd like to hear it. Uh, and so I'm going to start on the left side of the room and we'll go with the first row. If somebody's here for the Marietta Avenue, Roarstown issue, if there's something you'd like to say, if you could come to the microphone, state your name, address, and make your comment. Mr. Chairman, if I may also add, please make sure that you have signed in and clearly indicated your contact information on the sign-in sheet if you choose to address the board. Thank you. So it looks like nobody in the first row. In the second row? Yep. Uh, the, the next one, I think, is the one that is on. Is it? Both on. Yeah, okay. Just make sure you get close. Lisa Shaw, 2341 Wood Street. Um, I'm, con I'm concerned, of course, with the speed and the increased uh, tractor trailer. But there's one um, issue that I've been complaining about, and it's been ignored. At 2224, it's a rental house, a big greenhouse. And there are 12 parking spots there. There's been a um, box truck parked there for between 10 and 15 years. I've been in communication with Mr. Barker takes up four spots and he's said that it's an Illinois registration and they don't need inspections in Illinois. I did a quick internet study and they have to be inspected every year. So um, this truck's been sitting there taking up four spaces. Meanwhile, someone who parks on their front lawn of that property and backs up onto Marietta and you know how busy that area is. In fact, I almost broadsided them one morning because they can't, it's blind. They back right onto Marietta um, and use that as their, they park right outside of their door. So that that is an issue. It's illegal, the illegal driveway. There's 12 parking spots, four of them taken up by this box truck that's been there between 10 and 15 years. That needs to be addressed. And it's a dangerous situation. One of these days, someone's going to get killed. Can we, Um, it, you said 2224 Marietta? Yes. Can we pull that up on uh, Google Maps? So the parking space that you're referring to, is that on the street? Is that? No parking space on the front yard. They pull across the sidewalk. There's two vehicles. One's a huge truck. And they park right in front of their door. And then they back out onto Marietta Avenue. And in the back... There are, and on the side, I counted, there's at least 12 parking spots. One of them, this box truck that has been there for, and has not moved for between 10 and 15 years because it's been about, it's been a number of years since, yeah, that's it. And you see, there you go. <laughs> they drive right over the, the sidewalk there and there's two vehicles. Now they're gonna kill the trees because they're driving and compacting the soil. But that's not, a, and you see the alley right next to it. Down that alley, there's, I can't remember if there's four or six on the alley park. And then in the back off the other alley, which is called Church Street, there are, I think another six parking spots. Again, four of them filled up by this box truck that has been there with Illinois plates for over 10 years. Okay. And despite what Mr. Barker says, they are supposed to be inspected every year. The guy told him, well, now it, it's from Illinois. We don't need to be inspected. And I have insurance on this truck. But if you look on, on the Pennsylvania, if you are a resident, you're supposed to re-register your vehicle here within 20 days. So it's long overdue. And there's there should be no excuse for this fellow here and the two cars that park there to park legally on this property. Okay, so if I understand correctly, there it looks to be like a blazer. Yeah, there's two so cars. The right. there's okay, two cars and you're saying that that is an illegal driveway? That That's that... not a driveway. Okay. That's the front lawn that they just pull across the sidewalk there and park. Okay. Okay, can... Just this... to clarify, uh, Mrs. Shaw, you're thinking the the vehicle is legally parked now or not? There, that's the front lawn. That's not a driveway. Well, it looks like the side yard, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, and it you see that alley there. All the, on the side and in the back on the Church Street alley 
is where all their parking spaces are. And you won't be able to see. Oh, school lane, you should be able to see that. Yeah, right. You see right past the bars, there's a bunch of parking spots. And then in the back, right next to the little shed. So this off street parking, this is what you Yeah, there's, about. and then next to the shed, between that shed and the next door neighbor, there's more parking spots and a box truck that's been there like forever. The box truck anyway. Okay, so I guess question number one, can we find out if it is a legitimate driveway or not? Is that a, something we can research and get to the bottom of? Yeah, there's no permit okay. to hold for that. Um, yeah, where's the box truck? It was there. Okay. So if it's in a private, if it's in a private lot, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do. If it's parked on the street. The box truck? Yes. If it's parked on the street and it's not registered, then we have an issue. But I think the very first issue to, to establish is, is that a legitimate drive? It doesn't have to be paved, but is it a legitimate drive? So that's something that we can look into and get back to you on. I would appreciate that. You bet. Is there anyone else in that row that has something they wish to say? Okay. Going going into the next row, the third row, is there anyone that wanted to speak? Well, I'm I'm John Chrisman from two 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 five Marietta. Um, I didn't come to address this issue, but building on what Lisa said. The house that is now an apartment building directly to the east of the one she was talking about also parks on their front lawn. Not always, but they also back onto Marietta Avenue. And I think that is probably a driveway that has never been permitted by PennDOT to have legal, whatever you call it, access right of way to the, to the highway. So I'll just point that out to you. I don't want to spend a lot of time because I understand, you know, there's an issue in our block of Marietta Avenue. And um, the only thing I would say is, um, I'm not sure if the committee is aware that just recently a porch was damaged again. Um, many, many of the homes along there have lost their porches. If you park out there, one BMW got totaled a few years ago. Um, I won't belabor the issues. I just hope that, well, let me back up and say, I had thought that tonight you would be telling us what PennDOT said would be possible to do. So it's a little premature, but I hope that PennDOT will at least consider allowing us to have crosswalks, which visually I think would slow traffic, but also help those of us who like to visit our neighbors across the street and Salem Church and various other things that are on the other side of this, what is essentially a four lane highway. Um, it would help just to simply have painted crosswalks. Now, I hope more can be done than that, but that would be a great start. And I won't take up any more time. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Chrisman, yes. do you know the address of the property you were referring to? Um, it's the corner of School Lane and Marietta Avenue on the east corner it's a yellow house it 2222 well, that's the same property you were talking about okay so it's both sides of the school lane situation both sides of school lane okay yeah okay gotcha thank you in the very back row Alex DiMarzio, 2311 Marietta Avenue. And at the end of August, 2307 Marietta Avenue. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to the police officers because I we have seen an increased um, enforcement there. So first off, thank you. Um, I did start tracking the motorcycles and the neighbors have been texting me um, those times. I will say they are sporadic. So I apologize. But, um, and the colors are sporadic, white, orange, blue, it seems as though a lot of them are coming at nighttime. 
Um, even though they're sporadic, it seems that five o'clock on, there's a good bit of them that just speed right up the street. And they're, they're going so fast that even if I'm in my house and I get up when I hear the sound, by the time I get to the window, which has to be 10, 15 feet away from me, they're gone by that time. Um, so it is substantial. But I, I tried. We, we tried to okay. record them. I did want to apologize to the um, audience here because a lot of them are here because I did inform them at our last meeting. I thought we had said that, and I know it's not anyone's fault with PennDOT, that we would have sort of conversation about what PennDOT has said. Um, but we do have representatives from Salem United Church of Christ. The church felt it very important to come to show their support. So the people that are sitting here in this row are, are from Salem United Church of Christ. Um, one thing I didn't mention before was that I, my wife and I are the owners of the daycare there now since May. Um, so we have a stake as well as business owners that our playground is right there off of Marietta Avenue. And so you know how important it is for us, not only as homeowners, but as business owners as well. Um, one thing that was mentioned to me as I went through and talked um, the last time, and I'm trying to remember because now I forget, I apologize, um, was possibly putting in a speed sign that that has, but I don't, I told them, I don't know how great that would be something that electronic sign that tells you how fast you're going. Cause that has shown, um, to slow down people, but as a permanent solution, I don't think that's a permanent solution. I did say that to them. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you again to hearing us. I don't want to be repetitive, same thing, but thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Can I make a comment about the electronic yeah. sign? We'll be more than happy to put that out at some point. We didn't recently because we're still trying to obtain accurate data okay. from the speed study as well as our enforcement efforts that if we have the sign out there while we're doing that, then the data we're collecting isn't necessarily true and accurate. It so it is on our yep. radar to do though. Absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Appreciate it. Colleen Jacobson, 2009 Chapel Forge Drive. I just have a question on that box truck. Um, just for my, I can close it. <laughs> um, if it's registered in Illinois and the guy who resides here, does he go back to Illinois to get it inspected and and all that? Or is it just not up to date? I don't know. I'm just, just, just this question. I would need to do a little more research as to the box truck. If it's a company vehicle, then, and he's working for a company that's based in Illinois, then it wouldn't need to be registered in Pennsylvania. Um, so I need a little bit more research before I can accurately answer that. Because, you know, if I'm conscious about people driving around without insurance, especially since it's in an area, you know, it could cause damage mm -hmm. to someone else. So that's just a question I had on that. Um, and I just want to say, so I don't have to come back. Um, I want to thank you for um, the traffic, the the police activity on Centerville Road um, from Harrisburg Pike up to Knoll. Everyone's noticed it. Good. I, it was like last week, I think it was the last one you did. Yep. And, you know, that makes a lot of difference when people see that. <laughs> Good. It's visual. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the right side of the room. Good evening, uh, Lauren Weber, 2229 Marietta Avenue. Um, I missed the last meeting, so I'm, I apologize if I repeat the concerns that have already been stated, but um, I share the concerns that I've heard already, uh, the motorcycles at all hours, I have heard them as late as two in the morning. Um, and you know, I have three kids. We do not let them out front at all. Um, but just doing basic yard work, I'm fearful that um, a, road, a car will come off the road. So um, anything that can be done would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in that row? Anyone in the back row? Hi, my name is Gretchen Wendell. I live at 2236 Marietta. 
Um, our house was recently hit by the DHL truck. It is $95,000 worth of damage. I too am scared to get my mail. A lot of days I have to watch and make sure <clears throat> our mailbox was hit before this. So I'm just stating something. I know you you, you probably already know all of this, <clears throat> but I think sometimes it's nice to hear it from the person. Um, I appreciate all your work. <clears throat> I do wanna reiterate what John said, that I think the crosswalks would be a great idea. I think any type of way to slow down that road would be great. As you know, everyone's trying to speed through the, the, the light because the light's pretty long. Um, also, I have heard the motorcycles and today I saw them doing wheelies and they, they go, like Alex said, they go incredibly fast. <clears throat> so I'm just reiterating everything. I also would like to know when the PennDOT meeting is, what day, and can I come to that? Can any of us come to that and kind of talk to PennDOT as well? So I don't know if that's allowed. So that's not gonna be a public meeting. It's gonna be a staff meeting, okay. We won't be there. It'll be a staff and PennDOT staff. So it's not going to be open to the public. Um, and and while we're having this dialogue, I would really encourage or ask for everyone to have patience with us because working through the PennDOT process is not a fast process. It um, They're the ones that have control over that road um, and they go at their own pace. They'll hear us, um, but they move at their own pace um, and not at our pace. So I think we've definitely heard your concerns. I think we agree with you. I don't think that that's an issue that we don't hear you or don't agree with you. It's just a matter about how do we get these things accomplished and what can we do? Um, so I think when we present that to PennDOT, and when is that meeting? It's the last week, I think the 30th or 31st. 30th. Of August. 30th. August 31st. Yes. Okay. So And there's no way that anyone, like a public, because it's a staff meeting and there's no way that we can be there. Correct. It's going to be very technical. It's going to, they're going to, it's not going to be, um, you know, they're going to already know that there's an issue. That's all they need to know. And then they're going to look at it from an engineering high level. Like what, what do we do? What can we do? What are those kinds of things? And the time is going to be limited. So it's not like a, an open forum for public debate, if that makes sense to you. Got it. Okay. So we can probably expect at least six months for anything to get done or there's not really it's hard to I, don't, I don't know about that we can at least give you an it's update likely, i mean to be honest it's probably going to be at least six months uh the first thing that came out of the pen dot representative's mouth was that we offered that we we're going to be doing a traffic study a, a speed study they told us that they have to do their own hmm. so we can get the baseline data and we will so we have something to talk about but they're going to have to go and redo it themselves Right. Okay. Before well, if you need us anything. for anything, please let us know. Okay. Thank you. Is that meeting in Lancaster or Harrisburg or? That's... It's a Zoom meeting from the Harrisburg with the Harrisburg staff. Okay. So it's really not. I mean, it is not a public meeting. It's no. I'll be in our offices. Is there anyone else in that row? Okay. So obviously, everyone here felt it was important to come out. Um, and we appreciate it. We have heard you. Um, we're on it. Um, I know it's not as fast as everybody would like, um, but we, you know, there will be things done here. Um, and again, uh, it will be PennDOT driven. So we will try uh, our best to get the best result as soon as we can with it. We'll, we'll keep you uh, updated with our agenda and, and put basic information on so that the next agenda that comes out in September, mm -hmm. we'll have an update on that. You can get that off the website. I, I would watch the 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 agenda when it comes out. It comes out the Friday before. The next the next meeting will be September twenty, and the agenda comes out the twenty the fifteenth. Will be posted on the website, and I'll try to give it a bit more information as to what's happening there. This agenda says that the speed study has been requested and that the pen dot meeting has been scheduled. So we'll just, I'll just keep updating that as we know anything. And we may not know anything at the September meeting. Can you, yep. Yeah. In Bell 2237 Marriott Avenue. Uh, I have a question about, um, 
how helpful it would be to have uh, like an independent study on the traffic. Um, so I can take video or pictures or whatever. I, I haven't done any research into it, but uh, if I did go that route and did an independent study, would that be helpful at all? Um, would that be used? I don't think so, to be honest with you. I think PennDOT is very, just as Mrs. Schweitzer said, we're going to give them basic some information, and they're that's going to you know that's going to launch what they do. But they want to have a contained, they want their own study that they're going to do themselves uh, before they come up with uh, whatever design changes or whatever um, things that they want to do to the road that justify it. Um, so I do appreciate that. I don't think at this point that we need to convince them that there's an issue. Um, I think the data is going to support that. Um, I just think what you would be doing would be more of that. Um, and I think where they're going to be is more technical and what they're doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Did I see another hand go up? Okay. Mrs. Shaw, can you just... As a mother, there's power in the nag. And there's a local pen dot number that you call and report road conditions. I followed that up the food chain. And when we were trying to get the left-hand turn signal on Marietta, I was actually out there counting the school buses that had to illegally turn. And I kept reporting it to the fellow in Harrisburg and told him that if someone got hit, um, I was, I had all the data and I was going to tell WGAL and um, it worked and they turned it on. They, they said they had to do another road study, which was going to take another year and they had done one and something didn't connect there. So sometimes it does help to keep on them and to talk to someone and get a name and a number and keep calling. I'd say let's, let's take the cautiously optimistic approach. Let's see what this first meeting yields, and then maybe let's go that route. Let's let's be cautiously optimistic that. <laughs> okay. Did somebody else have a question? Yes, sir. My name is Lee Martin. I'm a member of Salem UCC Church, also a former for ten years council member in Mount Vilboro, in charge of streets. What they're saying is absolutely accurate regarding PennDOT and their methodology and how they look at and determine what is going on. We had several issues much like that on Main Street, which is obviously the Lincoln Highway, which is a state road, and it takes months and months. So when they ask for patience, I'm not siding, I'm just stating facts. We're going to have to all be patient with whatever the outcomes are, whether we like it or not. It is what it is, sadly. It, it's their method and it's how it works. So I think it's important that I have that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Martin, your lesson was Martin. Yes. Thank you. Alex Marzio, 2311 Marietta Avenue. I just wanted to bring up something that we talked about at last meeting that I thought about over the month um, and I wanted to ask if we could kibosh it. I, I don't think putting a no parking um, signs or anything like making it illegal to park on on our side of Marietta Avenue. I think it's going to stop, obviously, cars getting hit out there, which would lower the amount of accidents. Yes, I don't disagree with that. But I don't see it being a benefit to, in any way, shape or form to the accidents we see happening on hitting the houses or hitting people eventually, if God forbid that ever happened. Hope it doesn't. Um, but I also see it as sort of punishing the neighbors instead of trying to not punish but assist with the issues at hand um, because I know there are a lot of neighbors that do myself included I'll be honest park out front run the groceries inside as carefully as we can and then drive around to the back right you know what I mean so I think just from that because I sat on it thought about it I don't know if that would be the best course of action and I just wanted you to be aware of that and, and just to be clear, it's not going to be us that makes that determination. Um, 
and it may very well be like, you know, once the can of worms is open, it's all going to come out and they're going to decide what they think is best. And, you know, again, it's, it's their road. We won't be able to say, you know, that, no, we're not going to do that. They're going to have the jurisdiction there. So um, I hear you yep. on that. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's really going to be up to them on, on that, that subject. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Weaver, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I did not. I'm listening and, um, you know, hopefully we can come up with something good that'll help the situation, but just got to wait and see at this point. Okay. Okay. If there's nothing, is there anyone online reference to this subject? There's no one online. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, since we have a bit of time, just encapsulate what was discussed tonight. The concerns are speed, motorcycles. Um, you would favor crosswalks might help. You would not consider realigning parking on the roadway. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. You need to come to the microphone if you're going to keep talking. I would also reiterate the possibility of putting in the rumble strips. I know that's PennDOT's decision. I get that. Um, because aside from the speeding, it's the distracted driving that they go over the line. They smash into houses. They smash into cars. Um, whether they're speeding or not, them going over the white line is still going to happen. And yes, it's more destruction when they're higher speed. We know that, obviously. Um, but as I've said before, I think rumble strips might be a good sign, even though PennDOT thinks they'll cause a lot of noise. I encourage PennDOT to look at our location with the train and everything that we already deal with a large amount of noise as it is. So we're accustomed to it. So how do people feel about the possibility of noise with those rumble strips? So just so we're clear, I think we're not talking about rump stri strips that go all the way across the road. They're just no. on the side of the road. Just just divots on that white line that what is that called, officer? The fog line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The white okay. line is the fog line. Yeah. Just that. And I think before Mr. Lefevre had mentioned in the middle of the road, and I think he was misunderstood. That's not what I was asking for, because mm -hmm. that wouldn't solve the issue at all. It, it's more or less on those white lines, because any car that's been hit, any mailbox that's been hit, house that's been hit, they have to cross over that white line. And a lot of times from what I've been noticing is it's distracted or falling asleep or something along those lines, um, which is hard to control. I understand that but I feel as though with the rumble strips or the divots, it would assist in, if they hit that, they may go back over to the proper lines. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any new business tonight to discuss at the traffic commission meeting? Just a quick reiteration that Church Street is open. Chief yes. Baker mentioned that earlier, but it's been yes. verified multiple times and should not close again until it's paved. And to um, echo Mr. Weaver, that's good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sometimes all right. Some of that. Do we have any other public comment that was not related, that's not related to any of the items that were discussed here tonight of a traffic nature? And hearing none, and there's no one on Zoom, I'm sorry, sir, if you could come to the microphone for us. Mr. Schoenzenbach from uh, Barbara Goldbart. Is, is it appropriate to make a comment now about um, the, the very huge development that's being built on off of um, Roarstown Road close to Stony Battery? And I notice now that there's an entrance to this development not very far from Stony Battery. 
and I would hope that that's not going to be a permanent uh, uh, entrance way. Um, I'm not quite sure. Can we clarify where you're talking about? So you said Worstown and Stony Battery? Marietta and Stony Battery. Okay. okay. It's, it's an emergency access. It's required by code. So it's an emergency access for emergency vehicles. That's correct. It will be permanent, but it's emergency access. There's only one road into that development. Our code requires that there'd be two access points into the development for emergency services access. So it's an emergency access road. It will remain there, but it's for emergency access. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's nothing else, we're going to adjourn our meeting at 6.41 p.m. And we will be back for the Board of Supervisors at 7 p.m. So uh, thank everyone for coming, and uh, we appreciate uh, your comments. Thank you.